A customer persona is really a document that describes a particular customer or a customer segment. Uh, so it's a very concise definition, as concise as is possible, uh, that will allow you to effectively target a customer or a market or an audience that you want to be able to sell to. No, validating a customer is a very inexpensive process. It's really just about meeting the customer. Mm -hmm. If you meet eight or ten customers personally, from there you can go away and meet lots more customers or survey them online uh, so that you get a, a larger set of the same type of customers. Uh, there are many online services that will allow you to do this, uh, such as SurveyMonkey, which will allow you to find a segment or find an audience and go out to them directly with your own survey. I would always recommend meeting customers in person before you do a broader survey though. So the first one would be coming up with a tight definition of what, who your customer is. Uh, the second one would be going out and finding those people. Uh, so literally, whoever it is you've defined, you need to be able to call them up and meet them in person. And after you've met, say, somewhere between 8, 10, 12 of those people, then you need to be able to go out online uh, or in a broad mass fashion and target those people. If you can do those three things and you can come back with two to 300 responses from your customer, you'll not only have validated that you have correctly defined an audience, but you'll also have good concrete data uh, from your customer. So customer persona validation should be an ongoing process. Uh, the smaller uh, and more nimble you are, the more frequently I would recommend you do this. Uh, that doesn't mean you do it every day, but if you were to do it every couple of months or once a quarter, that would allow you to map who's actually buying your product to who you thought was gonna be buying your product and make sure that they're correct. Or if there's a difference, to look at that again more closely and understand what's the variation, what's going on. You should be frequently updating or building new customer personas depending upon who you're actually selling to. I would say the number one mistake is believing that my customer is everybody, right? There is no such thing as everybody. Uh, you need to be very tight, very specific, and that's, that's probably the first, first mistake. The second mistake is believing that we can clump customer personas together. Uh, you can't take two disparate customer personas that are unrelated and knock them together uh, and say, now I have a, a, a single customer that I'm going after. Your customer definitions or your customer personas must be concise and individual. And there are, with different personas, there will be different routes to market or different mechanisms of getting to them. And that's very important. I think the number one myth about customer personas is believing that you don't need them. Um, there are many people that will say, ah, I don't need that, I know who my audience is. Uh, that's, that's really not true. Even big companies will define customer personas uh, and they'll go through great lengths to make sure that they've got the right uh, customer persona built. Mm -hmm. uh, the second myth would be that you know, people are already buying my product, what do I need a customer persona for? Uh, it's, not, it's not relevant. And the truth is that it's so important to know who's buying your product so that you can better target them or better service them uh, that, that I can't understate the importance of building those customer personas even if you've already got people that are buying from you.